How's it going people? Welcome back to my channel. Um, first and foremost, I want to say a big thank you to everyone that's subscribed so far. I'm rising up to 15k slowly. Um, I never thought it was possible, but you know what? Big thank you to everyone who's followed me on Instagram as well. Turkish LDN, that's my main social media platform, Instagram. Hopefully that can get to 10k real soon and I can start pushing my channel and videos out there a bit more. I'm trying to highlight the truth to a lot more people. Um, Twitter, the same Turkish LDN, I don't use it as much as Instagram, but it's there, I use it, um, you'll often see me get into some heated debates on there, which is the reason why I don't tend to use it as much. Um, I'm tired of debating people that know very little about the issues around Arsenal Football Club. I mean, this is something I've looked into for the past 10 years. It's not something I've just been seeing and, and viewing for two years. It's something I've delved into, looked into, analysed for the last 10 years. I don't know everything, but I'm in a position to be able to form a very valid um, argument as to why we are where we're at and how we move forward as a football club and, and improve and develop. Now, this video today, um, it's just going to be like a rumour roundup. Um, I did say I'm not going to do daily videos based on rumours and I'm not going to do that. It's just that particular names like Priyat, Anderson, Saliba, Carrasco, it seems that we're being linked to them over and over again in the last week and a half, two weeks. Um, and it's, it's disappointing in my opinion, um, it's not filling me with any hope, um, it's, I'm quite down so far this summer, I just feel that we haven't been proactive enough, um, we all know Arsenal needs some hella changes to, to improve, and one thing that strikes me is, why has Mustafi not been linked to other clubs, why hasn't Mkhitaryan been linked to other clubs, surely first and foremost we've got to move them players on, surely Mustafi and Mkhitaryan are on the chopping block. We're into the transfer window, well and truly in. Why have they not been linked to anyone? We at Arsenal Football Club, yes, we work on a minimal budget. Again, I don't um, believe it's 40 mil, I believe it's around 70 mil. But we should be looking at moving players on, like Mkhitaryan and Mustafi. Adding that to the transfer budget, then looking at youth, seeing who will step up this season and fill in potential gaps. It might not be the best way and it, it probably won't fill you with hope as it won't fill me with hope picking the younger players but at least when you plug some holes with the younger players who are looking to develop who are looking to prove themselves and um, you can spend more in other areas now playing young players in this season it, it, it will give them a chance like i said to prove themselves and we might find some gems but we might not and essentially we can improve on those areas next season with more money because it's tight again this season, because we haven't got Champions League again this season, it's going to be, it's about balance. Now, the way I'd balance things is I'd spend big on a, a bigger name and then maybe bring in one or two smaller names and fill in the rest of the gap with the youth players. It seems like what we're doing is we're trying to split a 70 mil budget into four or five players. And the quality you're going to get out of them four or five players is not sufficient enough to improve us, in my opinion. It's not sufficient enough to... Um, break into that top four. Players that Priet, players that Carrasco, um, they'll improve us because we are so dire at the moment. We need, um, we need some injection into that attack. We need wingers. We need a winger that can run with the ball at like Carrasco. We need a replacement for Ramsey like Priet. But then you look down the road and you see West Ham going for four nils from Villarreal. Much better player than um, Dennis Priet. Much more creative, much more all-round. And apparently 25 mil, which is the rumour that we're getting Dennis Pryat for. So why can't we get four nils done? Why, what, it just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. Similar figures being touted. One's obviously the better player. One's played in a tougher league. La Liga is tougher than Serie A, in my opinion anyway. Um, but same old as Arsenal Football Club, we kind of move too slow move too slow and it's ifs and buts and we look in hindsight if we could have got this player. Another one, Dennis Pryor doesn't even get into the Belgian squad. Don't get me wrong, the Belgian squad is one of the best squads, international squads available out there. But why not look at Yuri Tielmans? He came into Leicester in January and his four or five months in the league, very productive, became an integral part of Rodgers Leicester's team. Goals, assists and they want to tie him down but Obviously, he wants to move to a bigger club. Now, I've checked his name and it doesn't seem like he's being linked to many other bigger clubs. N not any bigger than us, that's for sure. 
Well, actually, let me go. Man United are bigger than us, and he's been linked to Man United, but they're in a similar situation to us. They've only got Europa League football. So why can't we go in and challenge them for, for him? Worst case scenario, they offer more money and they get him. Pay a bit over the odds for him. At least that affects their budget. At least that affects one of our rivals somehow. Instead, it looks like we're just setting our sights on these names and there's no variety. There's no plan Bs. There's no option. We should have three players. Before the transfer window comes in, we should have three players identified for each position that we need. Each position that we need. Yes, I know it relied heavily on Champions League football, but we should still have options. These men are being paid. Raul is being paid to, to, to find the talent. Why are we being linked to the same names every fucking day? And the same names that are not good enough, in my opinion. Not good enough. You can argue, yes, we're Europa League. You can argue we don't have a lot of money, but you can look around and you see other teams doing better business than us. You see it, like I said with Fornals to West Ham, Tiermans, he's available, he's available, yet we're all putting all our eggs in one basket and trying to get a deal done for £49 million for Anderson and Prayet from Sampdoria. When did Sampdoria become our playing ground? Just because Torreira worked from there, what other clubs do that? What other clubs buy one player from a club, turns out to be a gem, and then goes back to that club and starts trying to get more players? Like, come on! Come on, you know I'm not being paid to do that. You're being paid to analyse the talent worldwide, across the world. And somehow we've managed to end up at Sampdoria two summers in a row. How is this possible? How is this possible? With such a shake-up in the back room, how are we still going to Sampdoria for talent? How? Surely we can get... Bit bigger and better players than them. Surely we can get younger and players with a higher ceiling of potential than, than Carrasco or fucking Anderson or Pryat. Now, don't get me wrong. If we sign them, you support them, you move forward. But I'm not going to be unrealistic. I'm going to be realistic regarding these names and these, the, the signings we make throughout the summer. Like, you tell me. Which one of the players we, we've been linked with so far really gives you hope that next season we're going to push on and break into top four? Because in my opinion, the level of player we're going for, Prayet, Anderson, Saliba, Carrasco, that, will, that, that could potentially break you into the top four. So potentially get you Champions League football. But it's another... It's, it's risky. We want players that give us the hope that we are going to break into that top four. Give us enough hope that at the beginning of the season, as an Arsenal fan, we can say we expect top four. If we move them by Prior, Anderson, Carrasco, you ask me, beginning of the season, whether we can make top four. You have to look at the other team. Now, Chelsea, it looks like their band is going to be rejected and, and they won't be able to sign any players. So I think they'll be sixth next season. So it will be a, a battle in the top five. It just depends on what the other clubs do. But all the other clubs are in a better position, personnel-wise, player-wise structure wise than we are the one most similar to us is man united and they're a financial beast that we cannot compete with unfortunately but it, it, it is facts so at the end of the day i just feel like arsenal football club we're moving too slow we're not doing what we have to do in terms of mustafi and mkhitaryan i need to be waking up to hear they're they're being linked to a club i need to wake up to hear they're having a medical i need to wake up to hear they're no longer at arsenal football club Instead, I'm just waking up to average, average names being linked to us and money again. Rejected this bid, want this much. They want this much for these two. They want this for that. Like, Arsenal Football Club, like, when are you going to learn? When will you learn? Look at the position we've got into by doing exactly what we've been doing in the last two weeks for the past four, five, six, seven transfer windows. When will they learn? A report is, is due to come out where it says we've made our first operating loss since 2002. I don't have it in front of me right now. Um, I read it earlier, but apparently that's coming out soon. And no wonder. Who, who's surprised by that news? Because I'm not. I'm not. At the end of the day, it's good news in terms of Stan Kroenke. Because profit is all he cares about. And it's good news that it could potentially... Um, have a domino effect and lead to the sale of Arsenal Football Club to someone who cares. But at the same time, we've lost that 
Usmanov investment. We've lost that go-to guy that was ready, made to pick up where Kronke is due to leave off. So we'd be would be hoping would be hoping for someone to come in and spend however much billion on us, when realistically, in my opinion, it's gonna it, it's gonna take a lot more than just a one year of um, one year loss in operating profit for major change to come. But it's a good sign in terms of affecting the profit line, affecting what Stan Kroenke cares about, which is money. To me, uh, that news. It's hard because as an Arsenal fan, you have to balance stuff. I want to spend money. I want to go for better and bigger players. But at the same time, we also know that Stan Kroenke would be happy just doing that. If we could just spend minimal and get top four or, or, or challenge at least, it seems like he'd be happy with that. The money in football, the money in English football right now, even though we're not making operating profit, Stan Kroenke still makes something off us. So I believe that... The balance is there. Like, do we, do we continue um, not purchasing merchandise? Um, with tickets, it's hard because you don't go to a game, the ticket is still sold or you're replaced. Um, and to be honest, match day revenue is, I think, fourth or fifth on the list of um, highest profit margins for the Premier League clubs. So not going to games won't cause that much, of a, um, won't cause that much damage to Kronke and, and the board above. But to hear we, we've made a loss, um, it's not the worst thing in my opinion. Um, I feel like things like this have to happen. So Kronke actually does something or he realises that he might as well set up one or the other. Because when you're running a business, if you start making loss, you're going to have to do something or you're going to have to let it go. Um, it's as simple as that. You can't keep, on, you can't keep hold of a business and, and go further and further into um, making an operating loss because it's just not sustainable. It's just not sustainable. So yeah, I kind of went off the rumour mill a bit to talk about Kronke and the zero, um, not the zero, but the operating loss that we're due to, to see in the next couple of days. It's just, I'm so disappointed, man. Call me negative, call me what you want. This, this, this transfer window so far has been a typical one. It's just not good enough. Just not good enough. Mkhitaryan and Mustafi need to go. Sort it out, Arsenal Football Club. How difficult can it be? Just take the L. I know at Arsenal, yeah, they're probably thinking, ah, oh, we bought Mustafi for 30 mil or whatever it was, 35 mil. I'm not accepting 15, 20. We just fucking accept it because he's fucking shit and having him around is detrimental to the other players. It's detrimental to the club. It's detrimental to the fan base. Because it causes rifts, it causes upset, it causes negativity. Mkhitaryan the same. Not as much as Mustafi, but we all know he needs to go now. So piss him off. Yeah? Piss Mustafi off. In an ideal world, I'd get rid of Xhaka and Ozu as well, but it's not going to happen. Just Mustafi and Mkhitaryan, fuck off. And then we can move forward. Add their transfer fees to the budget we already have. And maybe we can build a, a better picture around what we can do at Arsenal Football Club. So let me know in the comments below what you think. Are you like happy with our transfer window so well? I say window. Are you happy with the rumor mill so far? Um, what's your take on the first time operating loss since two thousand and two? That's due to come out soon. Um, is that is there a light at the end of the tunnel for us um, in that report in terms of Kronke, in terms of not making a profit anymore? And what about the names we're linked with? Like in my opinion, it's not good enough. Um, well, you've heard my opinion, so you lot let me know. Um, a few people didn't like that uh, I'm not rating Carrasco, but at the end of the day, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you real. And if he proves me wrong, if these players come in and prove me wrong, so be it. I'm all for that. I hold my hands up. Hold my hands up. It's for the best at Arsenal Football Club. If them players come in and prove me wrong, then cool. Cool. There's nothing wrong with being wrong. Nothing at all. But at the same time, you, like... The summer transfer window is needed to galvanise fans. Every club uses the summer window to, to give hope to their fans. Do you know what I mean? And in the past 10 years, what, what season have we gone into at Arsenal Football Club? Gassed. What season have we gone into at Arsenal Football Club saying, we're going to challenge for the title or we're going to challenge in Europe? Because in my opinion, it's been none. None. You go back to last season even. Go check the first top six show. 
I said, we'll finish fifth or sixth. I said, Europa League will be our best um, opportunity for top four. But in reality, it's going to be another difficult season. So this summer, again, I'm going to base what I think about next season on this summer. Now, if, if Kroenke gives the money to Emery and we spend more than 100 mil or whatever, then I look at Emery next season and criticise and analyse and dissect his performance as manager. But if we get another summer of 50 to 70 mil spent, yeah, on four or five players, which averages out to about 15 mil a player, then why would I put pressure on Emery? The pressure then has to go to Kroenke because everything's wiped off now. Wenger's gone, Gazidi's gone. In January, we heard um, Kroenke hasn't put in any money into the um, playing squad since he's come. We're the only club, along with Middlesbrough, in the top five leagues in, in England to, to not invest, have an owner investment. So all these things coupled up. If we have another summer of slow movement, of a reactive transfer window, of not enough quality coming in, not the areas that need fixing, then it has to go to Kroenke, not Emery, because no manager could deal with that, in my opinion. And that's not me giving Emery a, a clean slate or a fucking bulletproof vest. I just think we have to prioritise the issues at Arsenal Football Club. So if we don't spend this summer, I just put it as whatever manager we have in place, if we don't spend a sufficient amount of money this summer, then whatever manager we have wouldn't be able to perform. You need the tools to perform your job to the best of your ability. And at Arsenal Football Club, the tools are, are very rarely there to, to succeed. It's always tight, it's always stringent, it's always um, watch your pockets, which, which is not going to move us anywhere. And it's a fucking sad state of affairs, man. It upsets me. It upsets me. To be honest, this video was meant to be a quick one. But here I am, going into fucking the deep-rooted issues at Arsenal Football Club. But like I said, let me know in the comments below, man, what you lot think. Um, and apologies for the video about Carrasco being outside. I thought the wind wasn't that mad, but evidently it was. Um, on windy rainy summer days like this i'll do it inside um obviously i'm still building the channel so it's still about finding good locations cameras mics and all that stuff um i'm not an AFTV's level i'm not on troops and dt's level so to bear with me man can continue to love continue supporting just bear with me because trust me this channel is going to be the one by the end it's going to be the go-to channel um, and yeah, retweet, share, subscribe, do all that. And don't forget Instagram, Twitter, Turkish LDN. Nice one, people.